Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about 1980 AB6 and BC4 from the AP calculus exams. And so 1980 was forever ago, but the question is still relevant today. And I would say that of the implicit differentiation questions, which this certainly is, because look at that thing, um, that I am familiar with, this one has the weirdest twist to it, I think. Um, so we're going to have to think about it a little more. And I don't, you just don't think about implicit differentiate, implicitly defined functions. You just don't think about them as much, uh, maybe as they used to, because I think you will find this a little interesting. So let's see. So let y equals f of x be the continuous function that satisfies the equation. So this is a weird setup. Y equals f of x is a continuous function that happens to satisfy this relationship, this equation. x to the fourth minus five x squared y squared plus four y to the fourth equals zero and whose graph contains both of these points. So the graph contains two, one and negative two, negative two. So, I mean, if we took two, one and plugged it in here, you will get zero. And if we take negative two, negative two and plug it in here, we better get zero, right? Because f, those are on y equals f of x and y equals f of x, y equals f of x, replace the y's with f of x um, and it should work. So it's gotta work out. Then lambda, I don't know why they use lambda. I don't know why I use lambda. It might have been like an L, but I hate using L because L's kind of look like ones and then, you know, then that. Uh, be the line tangent to the graph at x equals two. All right. Find the expression for uh, dy dx. So first up, pretty straightforward. We're going to find the derivative. So this is part A. D dx. A lot of, well, not a lot. Chain rule and product rule going on here. Minus 5x squared y squared plus four y to the fourth. That'll be equal to the derivative of whatever's on the other side, which is zero, but if it wasn't, and it was some other random constant, I give you a good chance of forgetting that the derivative of a constant is zero. All right, so on this side, we get the derivative of x to the fourth is four x cubed. Now, the way that I choose to deal with these is I think of the first function as negative five x squared, and I think of the second function as y squared. What that does is it prevents me from not correctly distributing a negative sign. And you always wanna watch out for that. So I'm gonna do first, derivative of the second is two y, chain rule gives me dy dx, plus second, which is y squared, derivative of the first is negative 10x. So by grouping them the way I did, by thinking of the first function as negative five x squared, I don't fall into the trap of not distributing the negative sign after I use the product rule. I think it's good advice. That's how I always do it. I kind of recommend it, obviously. 16y cubed dy dx, and then equals zero. Right, everything, so you can already see this is like, if you're doing these in order, this is already a little more complicated than most of these. So everything that doesn't have a dy dx is going to the other side, which is all of this. So that's gonna mean that, and then everything with a dy dx, I'm gonna like factor dy dx out and then divide by the coefficient. So we're doing it this way. So 10 x y squared minus four x cubed wow. over everything that does have a dy dx. So negative, so that'll be negative 10 x squared y. This will be plus 16 y cubed. So negative 10, so I'm gonna do 16 y cubed. I have a bias toward positive leading coefficients. I think most people do. Minus 10 x squared y. It's like so close to simplifying stuff, right? It's like x, y, x, y, but only y, only x. So like, there's nothing you can do. I think that this is the final answer for this. Um, should I check it over again? I don't think so. Live dangerously, you know? No, let's check it. So. Uh, bring this, nope, where are you? Here we go. Negative 10 x y squared, but when we bring it over it becomes positive, plus four x cubed, bring it over it becomes negative. Then these won't change signs because we're dividing. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, A is done. B, write the equation of the line lambda. Well, what is lambda? Lambda is the tangent at x equals two, 2, 1 is given, right? 2, 1 is a point on it. So we know that 2, 1 is our point. So we really want the tangent at 2, 1. All right, so we need dy dx. 
y dx at 2, 1. x is 2, y is 1, so we get 20 minus 832 over 16 minus 40. So we get negative 12 over negative 24, so just one half. That's kind of nice. So then the tangent line is going to be y minus 1 equals 1 half x minus 2. OK, I think, my, I think that's good. So uh, again, you need all of the work. I just highlight at the end to be like, we're done with this step. Let's move on to the next step and see how life is going. Um, C, give the coordinates of a point that is on the graph of f, but is not on the line of lambda. On f, not on lambda. So, I mean, if you think back to what we were told, we're told that f uh, contains these two points, and we already used this point. So perhaps this point is not on lambda. So let's find out. So I'm going to take that point, negative 2, negative 2, um, is on f, but is not on. This is lambda. Lambda is our tangent line. So this is lambda. Um, so negative 2, negative 2 is on y equals f of x. That's given. Um, so lambda is y equals 1 plus 1 half x minus 2. So let's say such that x equals negative 2. Let's do lambda such that x equals negative 2. y equals 1 plus 1 half of negative 4, which is negative 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So therefore, so it's a line, right? So you can't have two y values associated with any one x value. Therefore, negative 2, negative 2 is on f, but not on lambda. OK, so that was just given you, we were basically given the point that we were supposed to use. So that's, that's good, right? So I, I would say that AP questions do not usually give extraneous information. Like, if something is told to you, you will probably use it. There's a piece of information that we were told that we didn't use yet. And so maybe it's going to come up now. Give the coordinates of a point that is on lambda, but is not on f. So this is a weird question. Um, here's, here's my challenge to you, without like thinking it through at all. Just take lambda, plug in some random x values, then take them and see if they are on um, on the graph that you think they're on, that they satisfy this, basically. So uh, like pick, pick anything. I'm not going to do it, because you're never going to find a point that is on lambda that doesn't satisfy this. Every point that's on lambda actually ends up satisfying this, which means there's something more going on here. So try it. It's very frustrating. Every, every year I watch my students get very frustrated by that. Here's the thing. We didn't deal with the fact that y is a continuous function yet. So y is a continuous function that satisfies this. Well, if we look at this, and you take out kind of like the complexity, just say that like um, a is equal to x squared, and b is equal to y squared, then uh, this is actually just a squared minus 5ab plus 4b squared. So I'm actually going to do something weird. So x to the fourth, my, uh, I'm going to write it here and take it with me. I got x to the fourth minus 5x squared y squared plus 4y to the fourth equals 0. All right, we're taking this with us. I'm going to factor this. So the reason I'm going to factor this is I didn't use that continuous function part yet, and there just must be something going on. So let's see what's going on. x squared x squared. I'm going to go with minus 4y squared minus y squared equals 0. This factors more. x plus 2y, x minus 2y, x plus y, x minus y equals 0. 
Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the, so it equals zero, right? So functions that could satisfy this relationship are from here, y equals negative x over two. From here, y equals x over two. From here, y equals negative x. And from here, y equals x. Any of these four functions will satisfy this relationship entirely. But what do we know? We know that y equals f of x is the continuous function that contains 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 2. So it needs to contain 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 2. I'm going to kind of take that with me for a second because I am not good at remembering things like that. So I know that the function that I want contains 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 2. So if x is equal to, uh, so for this first one, nope, if, uh, if, x equals is, if x equals 2, this would give me 2 comma uh, negative 1. 2 comma negative 1. So this can't be it, right? Because when x is 2, I have to get positive 1, and I did not get that. So this is not it. Uh, here, if x equals 2, then y equals 1. If x equals negative 2, uh, oh, you know what? Like, I might be thinking about this wrong. Well, let me keep going. If x equals negative 2, 2, negative 1, let me un... I want to un undelete these. Okay, so if, if x equals 2, y equals negative 1, that's it. Oh, well, that's definitely not. If x equals negative 2, let me check all of them. If x equals negative 2, negative 2, I get positive 1. Okay, so neither of those were right. So this couldn't possibly be it. That, that has nothing to do with it. All right, here, if x equals 2, y equals 1. If x equals negative 2, uh, then y equals negative one. So, so it's possible that this part can work. So I'm going to highlight that. I'll explain uh, in my mind. Here's, here's what's happening in my mind right now. I have the coordinate axes, right? I have these four lines, y equals x, y equals negative x, I have y equals x, I have y equals negative x, So your y equals x, your y equals negative x. Then I have 1 half x, and I have negative 1 half x. So I know these aren't to scale, but that's OK. 1 half x, and then negative 1 half x. So I have discovered that the point 2, 1 is on y equals 1 half x. So y equals 1 half x. So 2, 1 satisfies that. 2, 1. All right. So far, that's the only like satisfaction that I have found. Um, and then, uh, so if I take 2, 1 and I plug it in here, so I'm just plugging, I'm plugging in the points, right? If x is 2, I get negative 2, um, which I didn't want. If x is negative 2, I get positive 2, which I didn't want. So there's no, nothing worked there. Here, if x is negative 2, y is negative 2, this works. So for this one, oh, I just realized I should have color coded this better, but that's okay. y equals x contains the point negative 2, negative 2. So look at this. I think that the equation of, I think y, so y equals f of x is the continuous function that contains those points. I think that f of x is this function. It is um, x when x is less than or equal to 0. And it is x over 2 when x is greater than 0. So if I need to find a point that is on, now lambda, to go back to like whatever we're doing, lambda is this line. So what line is this? This is 1 half x 
one half x minus one plus one, so just one half x. Lambda is y equals one half x. Okay, so to find a point that is on, what are we trying to solve? I don't even remember anymore. A point on lambda that is not on f. All right, a point on lambda that is not on f will be any point that's on this when x is less than zero because f is equal to lambda when x is greater than zero. So what I'm gonna say is a point, I'm gonna say therefore as if this is one coherent argument. Therefore, a point on lambda, not on f, is negative mm, 6 and negative 3. Anything that satisfies uh, x comp whatever, anything that satisfies this relationship, what would that be? x comma, x comma 1 half x. <laughs> Where x any so let's make a note of that. Let's be the that person. Uh, any ordered pair of the form x comma one half x, where x is less than zero, will work. That's this is the hard. I don't think anybody got these points. This is like the genius. Like the, you know the five people a year who get a perfect score. Like those are the people who got this answer. Um, a, B, and C though, pretty straightforward. D was probably worth like one point. So like, you know, you could spend the remaining 40 minutes of the exam on it. It wouldn't really make a difference. Um, so A, B, and C is straightforward. D is like some advanced implicit relationship thinking that, uh, good for you if you like followed through with this, but, uh, I'm going to end this here. So, uh, that was 1980, uh, A, B, 6, B, C, 4. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.